If you wake up in the morning, don't wait for afternoon. When it is evening, do not wait for morning. Meaning whatever you have to do, do it. Do it. Don't delay. There are people who say, let me rest a little bit and I pray Isha after a while. We're going to talk about this. Right? And then the moment they wake up, it's already after midnight. And they feel like, oh, uh, alhamdulillah, as long as it is not Fajr, who said that? Who told you that? If you pass the midnight for Isha, you enter the zone of sin. A lot of people think, oh, I can do, as long as Fajr didn't make uh, Adhan, I am fine. I am going to correct those wrong perceptions that we have. Inshallah, today. Sure. Yes, he is fine. 
Allah Azza wa Jal will uh, give rahmah to her. Inna lillah wa inna lillah. Okay, as is our tradition in this beautiful uh, foundation, we recite few verses to, you know, clear the atmosphere, the spiritual atmosphere, <coughs> and to, inshallah, invite angels to stay with us, and then we go for the lecture. So a few verses, inshallah, from Surah 43, Surah al zuhruf the gold adornment, al zuhruf the gold adornment, for those who want to follow, 43 verse 1 Surah 43 verse 1 <laughs> لعلكم تعقلون وإنه في أم الكتاب لدينا لعلي حكيم أفنضرب عنكم الذكر صفحا أن كنتم قوما مسرفين وَكَمْ أَرْسَلْنَا مِنْ نَبِيٍّ فِي الْأَوَّلِينَ وَمَا يَأْتِيهِمْ مِنْ نَبِيٍّ إِلَّا كَانُوا بِهِ يَسْتَهْزِئُونَ فَأَهْلَكْنَا أَشَدَّ مِنْهُمْ بَطْشًا وَمَضَى مَثَلُ الْأَوَّلِينَ وَلَئِنْ سَأَلْتَهُمْ مَنْ خَلَقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ لَيَقُولُنَّ خَلَقَهُنَّ الْعَزِيزُ الْعَلِيمُ الَّذِي جَعَلَ لَكُمُ الْأَرْضَ مَهْدًا وَجَعَلَ لَكُمْ فِيهَا سُبُلًا وجعل لكم فيها سبلا لعلكم تهتدون. صلى الله عليه وسلم. The approximate translation. حميم. By the manifest book. That is the Quran. Verily, we have made it a Quran in Arabic. That you may be able to understand its meaning and admonitions. And verily, it, this Qur'an, is the mother of the book. Meaning the Lawh al-Mahfud. It is with us, indeed exalted, full of wisdom. Shall we then warn you not and take away the reminder, the Qur'an, from you? Because you are people, Muslimful, you are people who don't want to follow the Qur'an. And how many a prophet have we sent amongst the men of old? And never came there a prophet to them, but they used to mock at him. Then we destroyed man stronger in power than these, than Quraysh. And indeed, if you ask them who has created the heavens and the earth, they will surely say the Almighty, the All-Knower created them. Who has made for you the earth like a bed and made for you roads therein, in order that you may find your way. Sadaqallah. A few words to contemplate about. about. Is it true that the um, Quran is our only friend and it likes our views? And it comes as a friend. Yes. Yes. Uh, there is hadith, authentic hadith, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, the Quran will be the only thing that can stay with you Yawm al Qiyamah. When we say the only, among what you do. But all amal salih, all good deeds, your sadaqah can come, your fasting can come. But the Quran will definitely be buried with you, it will enter with you. So listen to the Quran if you cannot even read. If you cannot read, listen. Play the Quran, play the Quran in your car, in your house. 
and it is one of the reasons for blessings. You want blessings? Listen to the Quran. Let Quran play in your house. You'll see. If you look at why we miss some blessings, we don't play the Quran, we play music. Beethoven and what have you. SubhanAllah. With the Quran you see. Also, start your day early. Allah will put so much blessing. Pray on time. Because a lot of people ask, Shaykh, I don't see any blessing in my life. I say, do you listen to the Quran? No. Don't lie. Say no. Do you play the Quran in your house? No. So how do you think Allah will bless your time? Or your health? Or your property? Or whatever? So please, my sisters and brothers, careful. Quran should be part of our life. If you want something to enter the grave with you, Allah, family, friends, everybody will leave behind. Khalas? You buried Sister Marlene and you left her. Now whatever good she used to do is with her, including her part. Recite the Quran, read the Quran. Okay. Today we have three major sins, insha'Allah ta'ala, to cover. So please hold your questions until I finish. Just for the sake of time. Because each one of us, each, each one of these uh, major sins will take us at least one session. I'm trying to, inshallah, summarize them as much as I can and focus on the most important points. Again, for those who are here for the first time, I welcome you. First time about this series. We are now covering this book, one of the greatest books of Islam, al kabair The Major Sins, by the great scholar called Al-Imam Al-Hafid Al-Dhahabi Al-Dimashti. Imam Al-Hafid Al-Dhahabi dedicated his life for hadith. He was a great specialist of hadith. He knew many, he was a good scholar, but his specialization is hadith. He went and studied all the major sins from the Quran and the Sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu and put them in one book for you and me. Easy. He made it easy for you and me to know them, to avoid them. We said last time, Allah says, "In If you avoid the major sins, we will forgive you for the minor ones. Rahmah. Allah wants to give you Rahmah. Avoid the major sins, don't worry about the minor, we will forgive you for them. But, Look, you keep doing major sins, you, th you think Allah will forgive you for the minor ones? I'm not respecting Allah. Minor, we know, you are human. But major, no. No, but Sheikh, we're still human. Do tell Allah, <coughs> don't die with that sin. So let's know that. We covered last week, MashaAllah too. Last time. A shirk. May Allah save us from shirk. And we said there is no way for you or me to be forgiven if we die with shirk. And I have to come back to shirk because Muslims do commit shirk. You will see today another form of shirk. Today you're going to see another form of shirk that we do as Muslims, many of us. So because we have never been taught Tawheed correctly, we have been taught math, Science, English, right or wrong? Yes. How, how many hours your children learned English and how many hours they learned Agama? I, don't tell me, just think. How many times you send them to play their favorite sport compared to study with a scholar, not with anybody? By the way, do you want anyone to teach your children math? Anyone to teach them math? Or a mathematics teacher? Specialist, right? You want someone who knows math to teach your children math. If you teach them how to swim, you want someone who is called a good swimmer at least, if not professional. So in the beginning, why you send them to anyone? If you send them. Mm. Now you see why the weakness is in our children? Because we never chose for them the best. Imam Malik, I told you, it was his mother. His father left him long time ago. He went, he did not return until after 20 years. What was this great mother doing? She was selecting the best teacher in town, Rabi'at al -Rain. And she sent him to Sheikh Rabi'at al -Rain. That's why we have Imam Malik. Who produced Imam Shafi'i? So it is how what we choose for our children. 
Same thing for ourselves. Alhamdulillah, we are here and we are learning. Shirk has many facets and we have discussed that last time in a, in a quite thorough way. And for those who, inshallah, would like, you can always go to YouTube and you can watch the series. Uh, may Allah reward my, my brother and his wife for, uh, inshallah, uh, recording. The second major sin is killing, murder, to kill someone, to kill an innocent life. We did that. Today, we talk about sorcery, and you are going to be shocked about what you hear. Why? Because a lot of people commit sorcery. Believe in sorcery. Go to sorcerers. Listen to sorcerers. Give them money. Result to so-called metaphysical solutions for their problems, or result to metaphysical things to harm someone. Let's see, inshallah. Al-Sihr in Arabic, known as Sihr in Malay Sihr. It's a major sin, why? Because the Sihr must commit kufr. In order for a magician to become a magician, in order for a bomo to become a bomo, in order for a black magician or sorcerer to become what he wants to be or she wants to be, they must commit kufr first. So you're going to a kafir actually. Even when he wears, uh, it looks like a sheikh. He looks like very pious, wearing hijab. But that's actually a person who has committed kufr. Why? Because sihr is resulting to supernatural and natural things in order to solve a problem. That sihr cannot help you until he obeys an enemy of Allah called Shaitan. That Shaitan start working for him. But in order for the Shaitan to work for him, he must first, he or she must obey him and do something very, very haram that makes a person kafir, such as urinating or defecating on the Mus'haf. Yes, the Shaitan will tell that person, you want me to work for you? Without seeing him, he's, he's listening to a voice, he says, yes, I want you to help me and do things for me. He says, okay. Bring a copy of the Quran, urinate on it, defecate, cut it, shred it, throw it in the toilet. Bring me bad smell. Do something, slaughter for me, slaughter something. Bring an animal. And they like uh, black animals, i tell you later on why. Bring a black sheep, black goat, black cat. Kill, kill something for me. Spill blood for me. And once the person does that, I, I gave you just a few examples. Then that person, that shaitan, is ready now to work for that person. So, the first step for a bomo to become a bomo, he must first commit shirk. Although he looks for you very biased, he's not. There are many hypocrites who live among us. We think they are very good, but actually they mean very bad for you. The bomos and the sorcerers are like that. They have to commit kufr first, an act of kufr, okay? Um, a shaitan al-mal'un, may Allah curse him, the cursed devil, do you think he is going to teach you sihr because he likes you? Allah says, Inna shaitan lakum aduun fattakhiduhu aduwa. Indeed shaitan is your enemy, therefore consider him as enemy. Allah said that. In Surah Yasin, Alam ahab ilaykum ya bani Adam, Allah ta'abudu shaytan, innahu lakum aduun mubin. Didn't I take an oath from you, O children of Adam, that you should not worship the shaytan because he is a clear enemy for you? How many times Allah mentioned the shaytan in the Quran? How many times? The story of Adam, from beginning, the enemy was there. But we forget about him. He doesn't forget about us. So when he teaches someone a sihr, not because he likes him, because he's going to use him. So the bomos also are being used and abused by the shayateen. So sihr is dealing with the demons. Please remember this. And that's why it is absolutely wrong, wrong for you to deal with the sihr, because you are playing with fire. So you stay away from them. The first Allah is 
Imam uh, Ibn al-Qayyim al-Jawziyah, may Allah have mercy on him, said, that rule, every Muslim need to know this rule. Everything Allah has commanded you to do and made it lawful to you, it's good for you. Anything Allah has forbidden and prohibited you to do <coughs> is bad for you. Under this rule, sihr, when Allah says don't approach sihr, it's very bad for you. When you want to get out, you can't. And you may go cuckoo. I know a lot of people who are dealing with the so-called bombos. Now when they want to repent, they can't. They won't, they can't. Because they are under the grip of the shaitan. They need a lot of counseling and motivation and this and that to at least wake up. Because they have been for years under, under, uh, yes, under the, the power of that shaitan, whatever it is. Now, here are a few verses in the Quran where Allah clearly prohibits sihr because people, we are Muslims. Muslim means, first, whatever I say in the Quran, uh, halal or haram, I need to go first to the Quran. Second, to the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu In Surah Al-Baqarah, Surah 2, and this is why we need to read Surah Al-Baqarah before you uh, ever go to a new house. Before you occupy a new house, new building, new apartment, Surah Al-Baqarah at least should be recited. And I mean this, eh? Rasulullah sallallahu told us that. Because there are verses like these about sihr. You may occupy a house that was used for sihr, or someone put sihr, or someone was so jealous to do something for you there or whatever. So before you move in, make sure someone reads Surah Al-Baqarah, preferably you. If not, then someone. If not, place it in Shabbat. Surah, okay. Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 102. Surah Al-Baqarah, one, uh, verse 102. Allah says, But it's the shayateen who committed kufr, they teach people sihr, meaning they teach them kufr. Here, kufr and sihr mentioned in the same ayah. So those who learn magic, they are learning kufr. Now you know why Allah prohibits magic? Because it's a form of kufr. You might not know. You might not understand. Just follow. Like why we have to pray five times a day? Ah, uh, what do you want? Less? How about why we don't pray ten times a day? Have you seen those people who say, why we have to pray five times a day? Why not why not twenty times a day? Why we give 2.5% zakat? Why not 50% zakat? Ah, 2.5% too much now. How about if it was 50%? Sheikh Ramadan, why the whole month? Why not six months? 50 50. What do you go to have? How about that? You can't change it. You die. So people have to stop, subhanAllah, arguing with Allah. Allah has been so merciful in His. <laughs> deen to us. <coughs> and Allah will never tell us to do something we, can, we are not able to bear or to do. So, in this verse, verse 102, Allah says, but it is the shayateen, the devils, who have committed kufr, they teach mankind sihr. So who is the teacher of the sahir? Shaitan. Very good. In another verse, Allah Azza wa Jal said, same, same Surah Baqarah, وَمَا يُعَلِّمَانِ مِنْ أَحَدٍ حَتَّى يَقُولَا إِنَّمَا نَحْنُ فِتْنَةٌ فَلَا تَكْفُرُ فِتْنَة Sihr is fitna. فَيَتَعَلَّمُونَ مِنْهُمَا مَا يُفَرِّقُونَ بِهِ بَيْنَ الْمَرْءِ وَزَوْجِهِ Part of what they learn in sihr is how to separate between husband and wife. In Islam, actually, you should do everything to make a husband love his wife and the wife love her husband because a stable family means stable community. No, they will do everything to separate the man from the woman. Ah, including some mothers-in-law, may Allah forgive them. <laughs> when they're angry with the son-in-law or daughter-in-law, yalla. Bomu in slangor, yalla, let's go. Why you do that? It's difficult to know who is the magician and who is not. Kami, Kami. All your questions are coming. Who is magician? What they do? Inshallah, coming. 
But you should know that these Gomons, these Sahir, they can do nothing of harm to you except with the will of Allah. Meaning you, the Sihir will not work against you unless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala let it happen. So do we blame Allah? No. We blame those people why they do Sihir. Why does he allow that Sihir to work? The question is why stupid people resort to Sihir? Not why Allah allows or not allow. You don't, you don't question God. Show respect. Don't question the king. Question the people who do wrong. Not the king for allowing certain things. And why does he allow? I tell you why. Because you are responsible and I'm responsible for our actions. Otherwise, okay, no responsibility. Meaning no intellect. Yalla. When he takes the intellect, no reason, then fine. Any crazy person, is he responsible in front of the law if he does anything wrong? No. If someone crazy walks out naked in the street, can we blame him? No, because uh, say you want Allah to remove your brain and let you walk in the streets naked? No. Ah, that would be quiet then. No, no, I want my mind. Okay, then quiet. Accept what Allah tells you to do. And that's it. SubhanAllah, you see people say, why does Allah allow certain people to, to do this? Because Allah made you human. And human means you have intellect. And intellect means you are responsible. You want Allah to, no problem. He will remove that or turn you into a frog or orangutan. And that's it. Just give you bananas. You want to be human and you want to uh, wear the best clothes and travel everywhere you want, but you don't want? Yeah, Allah, so we need to get up a little bit, wake up, get up from the cocoon we have, we have been living for long, not many years. And they learn from them what, what they learn from the shayateen, what just harms them, nothing beneficial. So sihr, nothing beneficial. It's not like learning chemistry to make medicine for people, physics so that you uh, come up with a new engine or what. No, 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 no. This is... Allah says there is nothing good from Sihar. So don't say, I'm going to learn. So, no, nothing good from Sihar. Put that in mind, please. Because a lot of people say, Sheikh, there are some good things in magic. There is nothing good in magic because Allah said so. When Allah says something, that's it. Your mind and my mind must stop. He said, whatever they teach them is just harmful and nothing beneficial. And then he said, وَلَقَدْ عَلِمُوا لَمَنْ اشْتَرَاهُ مَا لَهُ فِي الْآخِرَةِ مِنْ خَلَقِ And they have known, we have taught them, we have told all the prophets, including Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that whoever takes this path of seeking knowledge, of sihr, in akhirah he has nothing, meaning in hell. In akhirah he has no way to be saved. Re review these verses please, Surah Al-Baqarah 102, 104. Go to Surah Al-Baqarah on your free time, open the Mus'haf, go to verse 102, 104. And read. Alhamdulillah, we are ummah of reading and we need to learn. So, you find a lot of people, my sisters and brothers, seeking the knowledge of sihr. And actually what they do, in order to be momos and controlling people. Fir'aun, may Allah curse him, used sihr to control people. Although he was a, 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 a strong king, but still he needed to strike fear in the hearts of his ra'yat so that they say nothing. How he did that? Through magicians. So when Musa السلام, came up with a few miracles from Allah Azawajal, what did Fir'aun do? He resulted to the specialist among the Sahara. He didn't go just any homo. He went to the greatest. Here he is. He is a king still resulting to Sihar. Do you see why it's powerful? 
Because the king, like Fir'aun, who was saying, I am your highest God. There is no God but me. That's what he was saying. Na'udhu Billah. May Allah curse him. He still was so weak to resort to. He goes to magicians, come, come, help me. But sorry, you are the king. You can do anything. No, no, no. That shows you that Seher is more powerful than politics. Yes, because they themselves sometimes resort to Bomo to get them help. Ah. Well, in Islam, no. When you have troubles, who do you resort to? You have lying Fatiha. And you will see. Go back to Allah, pray to Rak'as and say, Ya Rab, help me. I am facing this problem. That's it. Done. The, 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 the help is coming. It's on, on its way. Sometimes it takes time. That's all. But it is coming. Don't doubt Allah. Okay. So don't go to almost anymore. Huh? I'm coming. I'm coming to see how dangerous it is. Now, in Islam, this has to be known. Huh? This has to be known. In Islam, uh, what's the punishment of a sahir? We know the punishment of a thief if, is to lose his right hand from here, from the wrist. Not from here. Haram. From here, haram. From the wrist. The punishment of murderer is death. The punishment of drugs in Malaysia? Death. Yeah, hanging. Okay. By the way, that's not Sharia. No, but still we accept it. Right or wrong? There is a way of executing the... But it's not the Sharia way. But we still, because we need to protect the country. Good. That's my point. So if you have accepted to hang the drug addicts and the drug traffickers, why don't you do it for murderers? When Allah said so. Maybe here, not all over the world, Muslim world. I'm talking about the Muslim world. Ah, okay. So Alhamdulillah, we know there are capital punishments for certain crimes. Committing seher, practicing seher, also has a punishment. And that is Rasulullah Sallallahu saying, وَحَبْدُ السَّاحِرِ الْقَتْلُ The had of sahir, magician, homo, the one who harms people, do things to separate between husband and wife, to make you sad, to make you just wandering, to vomit, to... We will see some examples of sihr. Is killing by the sword, one hit. Is beheading. Yeah, it's because it's a capital punishment. We just said he committed kufr. We're talking about Muslim Bomo. He's no more Muslim than at that moment, khalas. Ah, so it's a serious offense. Okay. Now how about the people who go to the Bomo? People like you and me. Should, we be, should they be killed? No. But, mm, wait and see. The Prophet ﷺ said, Avoid the seven destroyers. There are seven things destroy the life of a human being. You are alive, you're alive. You, you, you breathe, you walk, but you are actually have been destroyed long time ago. If you do commit one of these seven, one of them is sihr. Shirk, Qatl, Sihr, so far. We're gonna see the other things that if you commit in your life, actually you are a dead walking human being. You, you know when you died long time ago? Unless you make tawbah quickly. Uh, with tawbah, alhamdulillah, you, you're okay. But I'm saying, for example, in 1996 you have been practicing Sihr and you didn't make tawbah. You don't want to change. Since then, actually, you are dead. Oh, Sheikh, we are 2016. Yeah, 20 years, long time ago. It's just you had no grave. Wherever you used to walk, that was your grave. Because you refused to make tawbah. Some of those major sins are called al-muhlikat. Things that have destroyed your ayah. Why? Because they throw you in Jahannam. Mm, the decision was made long time ago. When you committed that sin and you never... Major sin means what, sisters and brothers? Major sin means if you commit it and make, don't make tawbah, definitely you're going to hell. That's what it means. A major sin, when it's committed, 
Allah waits for you to make tawbah. If you make tawbah, He will forgive you, inshallah. If you don't, and you die like that, it means you are not going to Jannah until you go to hell. Even if you say, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. And we, we take it, we, we think it's all right, you know. Allahu Akbar, may Allah save us. Yallah, allow me now, I take a, a lighter and just burn you for a second. Just a second. Who said out? <laughs> ah, yeah, I didn't even do anything as he said out. <laughs> Good, because you know what does it mean. And that's the lighter of dunya, that's just to light a cigarette or whatever, which is haram. May Allah have mercy on us. The great Imam Hassan al-Basri, the great Tabi'i, Imam Hassan al-Basri, after the Sahaba came Tabi'i. The master of Tabi'i, his name is Al-Hassan al-Basri, a great, great mu'min. He said, I rather be with those who scare me to, to death in this dunya, and therefore I find myself safe in the hereafter, than those who give me hope. Eh? In dunya, everything will be okay, don't worry, tapana, tida adamas ana. And then find myself facing hellfire. <coughs> so you be rather with those who make you cry than those who make you laugh because most of them are laughing at you. So I go by that logic of Imam Hassan al-Basri. I would love someone to scare me in dunya so that inshallah when I go to Allah, alhamdulillah. In the other way, no good. Make you feel comfortable in dunya and then what you stand for Allah? You're so scared. Mm -hmm. And Rasulullah Sallallahu said, no two securities will be together. And no two fears will be together. They said, Ya Rasulullah, what do you mean? He said, he who fear Allah in dunya will not fear him in the hereafter. <coughs> taqwa, if you have taqwa, taqwa means fear. You are afraid to do haram like this, like say haram is in Akhirah, don't worry, you will not be afraid. And those who did not fear Allah in dunya, it's okay, la, la, you know, you know that, that, that attitude? Well, they have to fear him over there, what he's going to do to them. So may Allah make us oran bir taqwa, ameen ya. Then he said, فَلْيَتَّقِ الْعَبْدُ فَلْيَتَّقِ الْعَبْدَ رَبُّ فَلْيَتَّقِ الْعَبْدَ let the abd, let the slave, that is your me, fear his Lord. And let he not be, let him not enter what he will lose, dunya and akhirah. So sihr makes you lose dunya and akhirah. Not just, na'udhu billah, the dunya. Dunya and akhirah. You lose both. Um, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in the hadith narrated by Imam al-Hakim, hadith sahih, also narrated by Imam al-Dahabi, Imam al-Tirmidhi, that the Prophet said, حد الساحر ضربه بالسيف. The had, hudud, law, force, for more people, is to hit them one time. One time with the sword, that's it. Meaning the sword should be very, why? Why? Number one is kufr. Didn't we say just now this prophet? Second, you are resulting to super and natural things that people may not find easily to, 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 to stop the harm you have done. Three, you are doing so much harm to people. Four, the seher does not end until the seher dies. If you are understand, God forbid. Unless you find the seher and open it, like the, what they did to Rasulullah Sallallahu with his hair. With his hair. A Jewish lady did say her to Rasulullah Sallallahu That's why I keep telling you, when you comb your hair, do not leave your hair anywhere. Someone will take your hair and harm you. So always when you comb your hair, especially ladies because they have long hair, what you do? Make sure you flush it in the toilet or you bury it. Okay? Make sure no one has access to your hair. Your nails, when you cut off your nails. SubhanAllah, when Rasulullah Sallallahu was telling us, bury your nails, or get rid of them from somewhere where no one can get, we leave them somewhere and we ask the maid to clean. If the maid is angry with you, and she has a bomb or somewhere, 
Ha, ah, now yeah. Ha. Ah. Really serious. Okay? So, you have to be careful when you discharge certain things that can be. Also, we have got so many bombos in hospitals looking for the umbilical cords, placenta, skin, surgery, you know, left over, a kidney, fail, human. Well, you can get animals that, no, the gin wants human things because he leaks them. He, the, you have to please the gin in order to stay in business of seher. What do you think they're playing games? You think the gin will just work for you? You know, I love you very much, can I do some free work for you? There is nothing free. You have to pay me. You have to do certain things. And sometimes, if it's male gin or female gin, they do zina with the humans. Yes. How? Better not to know. <laughs> It's another disgusting world. So, the jinn will not do things just for free. A shaitan. He has to do something that displeases Allah because he is in the business of displeasing Allah. So, the bomo, actually, it's not the bomo that is benefiting from the jinn, it's the other way. That's why there is Surah al jinn. Uh, one day we do tafsir of Surah al jinn and you will understand. Because Allah says, and a group of us, talking about the jinn, used to visit the humans, and the humans getting help from them, فَزَادُوهُمْ رَحَقَا They, they had, had nothing but being tired and exhausted. They exhausted the humans. So, by beheading the sahir, you are ending the sahir. Because the jinn is no more connected to them. You go catch the jinn, go catch him. No, catch the human and finish him. Because it is possible. That's Rasulullah saying. Again, that's the most merciful human being saying, do this to them. Because they do so much damage. Imagine, husband and wife, very alhamdulillah, they love each other. Suddenly, extreme hate. She's she is making no sense to him, he is doing this, she is doing, and the family is about to fall us. Sometimes, is that what happened actually? You know someone is married happily? I want him. So you go to a sahir, he gives you something, and then the man is no more with his wife, he's just running after that woman. Yes, yes. <laughs> or vice versa, a woman is happily married, she's now running after another man, which is haram. Allahu Akbar. So they do evil. And evil must be fought. Evil must be fought. If you don't fight evil, it will come to you one day. Evil was in the neighborhood. You never call the police and say, hey, I think there is a thief in that house because I don't know that guy. If they come, they, they see. If he is a thief, they take him to jail. If not, alhamdulillah. But you did your part. If you don't do that, next time you come to your house. So Seher is like that. You let it happen, let it happen, it will one day come to you. Um, Bujala ibn Abda radiallahu anhu said, Atana kitabu Umar radiallahu anhu qabla mawtihi bisana. Bujala ibn Abda. This is Sahabi who was a governor. And the Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu. When Umar radiallahu anhu was the caliph of the Muslims, he had one of the governors by the name of Bujala. In one of the lands, no need to know. Maybe Bahrain, maybe something. He said, one year before Umar died, radiallahu anhu, he sent us a note, what you call a decree. Like the prime minister said to the ministers, do this. What was that command? He said, اقتلوا كل ساحر وساحرة. Kill every male or female who are caught committing sin. Kill them. So that was the decree also of the Sahaba. And you know, the Sahaba will never do something the Prophet didn't do. Why? Because new lands were open. Not only the Arabs were committing sin, but also Persians, Romans, 
Africans because Islam started spreading. So he said, terminate every sahir or sahir. Any man or woman who practice sihr, finish that. That was the command of the Caliph Umar radiallahu <coughs> Wahab ibn Munabih, I am using few names of the great scholars of Islam. He said, fi ba'd al -kutub. I have read in some of the previous books, before Quran, the Torah, the Bible, the Zabur of uh, Dawood alayhi salam. I have read, read earlier in the scripts before Quran that Allah said, La ilaha illa ana. There is no God but me. Allah saying, there is no God but me. Laysa minni man sahara wa la man suhira la. I, have, I am absolutely innocent from anyone who commits sihr and from anyone who goes and asks for sihr. You have nothing to do with Allah, meaning you are on your own. He will not show you mercy. Wa la man takahana wa la man tukuhina la. Nor with the person who you go and give palm readers, you call them palm readers, they are not sahir, but they read your palms. Huh? Soothsayers, you give them your coffee, and they look at your coffee cup, and they tell you this. If they know all this, why are they still in that old house? <laughs> in that kampung? Why they don't occupy the Twin Towers of Malaysia, you know, both belongs to me. You are walking there, it's homo so and so. Why they are so poor? If they know the MC, they should at least first do good for themselves. Right or wrong? I mean, think. And you know, most people who go to Bomo are the so-called educated people. Yes. Uh, doctors, engineers, lawyers, judges. And I say, Allahu Akbar, Allah gave you a mind that made you study so high to become what you are. And yet, time zero, when you have a problem. Yes. Speaking about coffee. Is this coffee or tea? It's okay. Both, both, both is good. It's, it's, it's coffee. Wala man tatayyara, wala man tutayyara lah. So even if I, if I go to a bomo, a sorcerer, a black magician, or I go to uh, what you call a person who claims to know and read the palms, read coffee, whatever. Huh? Or Tatayur. Tatayur is very bad. Most Muslims do Tatayur. What is Tatayur? Ya Allah, save us. What is it? Uh, in the morning you see something you don't like. Black cat, crow. And you say, oh, it's going to be a bad day. Superstition. That is very negative. Don't do that. They are just like of Allah like you if you see something don't say the day is bad this day is going to be bad Tatayur. Tatayur is very bad it's from shaitan you know you get up in the morning you break you break a cup early morning you say oh the, this is very bad this is a sign that my day is going to be bad Allah wants to purify even your thoughts why are you so negative Ah, say so alhamdulillah. Okay? So do not feel su superstitious. Don't be superstitious. Don't. It is haram. So, Wahb ibn Munabih said that these things were even mentioned in the books before us, let alone in the Quran. And Wahb ibn Munabih is a specialist of Judaism. He knows very well the scriptures of the Jews and the Sabbath. Now, Ali ibn Abi Talib, may Allah be pleased with him, narrates a hadith. Sayyidina Ali heard the Prophet sallallahu Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anh, karam Allah wajah, says, I heard Rasulullah sallallahu saying, thalathatun la yadkhuluna al-jannah. May Allah never make us amongst them. Three people will never enter jannah. Wow, oh, I don't want to be one of them. I don't want to be one of these people. Number one, mudminu khamrin, yam sayin, yam sayin. A Muslim who is alcoholic cannot stop. No, no, cannot stop. Drink but never stop. It's not like someone who made a mistake, he or she, one, uh, one day, one year. And you know, thank Allah if you have never touched my liquor. Thank, thank Allah if you have never committed a major sin. Thank Allah. Say, Alhamdulillah. You know, 
you meet Allah with, I never touch liquor. You know, I never smoked. I never committed zina. <coughs> you are, mashallah. Even if you have done, don't worry. Repent to Allah. Ask Allah to forgive you. And inshallah, Allah will. But don't meet Allah while you are still. Yam saying, Yam saying. There are people still drinking. And then they die. Ah. So the first one, Mudminu Khamri. Number two, Wata'i'u Rahimin. A person who severes his mouth. He decides not to visit Salatul Rahim. He cuts it. I don't want, I don't care about my family. I don't want them. I don't want to visit them. I don't want them to visit me. Ta -ta -ta -ta, like this. Okay, that's number two. Number three, Wa Musaddiqun bis Seher. A person who believes in Seher. Let alone the magician who does it. If you go to a magician and you believe him, and therefore you take something from here or her, and you do it for people to harm them or to get benefit from them, let alone the person who does the sihr. If you just believe in sihr. This is Ali radiallahu anhu, hearing who? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. So three people, don't be one of them, I repeat. Mudminu khamrin, the person who drinks alcohol a lot. No stop. Number two, that doesn't mean those who drink uh, only a few times uh, they are good. No, they are not good. Number two, Qati Rahim, person who decided not to visit his family nor allow them to visit him. And <coughs> there are people like that. They never go visit their family. That's very bad. That is very bad. And number three, when you talk about Islam, is it just family? Blood. Friends. No, blood. Very good. When we say Silatul Rahim, it means only the family. Those who have blood with you. Blood. Okay? That is Sirat al -Rahim. There is another thing, which is the Ukhuwa. Brotherhood and sisterhood. Friends, people you love for Allah's sake. No, we're talking about if you severe the bonds of the family. Your auntie, you never visit her. Your uncle, they're still alive, you don't want to go. We will come to that, major sin. That's a major sin. We will see. Uh, alcohol also is a major sin. That's why I say, these are all major sins. If you die like that, if you die still believing in Sihir, if you die still drinking, if you die while you are severing the bonds with your brothers and sisters, with your uncles, aunties, parents, they said that, you are in big trouble with Allah. May Allah reward Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anhu for telling us this hadith. This hadith narrated by the great Imam of Hadith, Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal, Rahimahu Allah. Uh, part of believing in Sihr is my sisters and brothers, be careful of this. Many Muslims do still, still do this. Amulets. You hang something over here. Yes. That is part of Sihr. Do you know that or not? You may not know. I, I trust you. You might not know that it is, but that person who does those things for you and ask you to hang it, that is sihr. <coughs> that is sihr. But you don't know. That person is doing certain things, and this is what they did. I opened many of them. This is what they do. A piece of small paper. They do jadwal. And they do this. If you see this, what does that mean already? They do symbols. And those symbols is what the jinn tells them to do. And they ask you to put it somewhere. Even when sometimes they write for you things. In Jawi. Actually, that's Quran. You put it here. <laughs> you put it where you sweat. Na'udhu Billah. This is your respect to the Quran. Because that is what pleases the shaitan? Things like that. Talisman, they do, they, they use talisman. Very good. Talisman also coming. So the amulets, if you hang anything, believing that it brings you luck. Ah, it brings me luck. As long as, you know the eye of, uh, the blue eye yeah, from Turkey? Eye. That is also wrong. Because you are believing that, you know, as long as I have this, 
No evil eye will touch me. So you are not believing that it is Allah who protects you from the evil eye. But as long as I have that blue eye, my wife knew. Still, you don't hang them. Rasulullah saw so a man, look. So a man with a bracelet on his hand. But thread, thread, like Hindus. You know the Hindus do that? Yeah. See, some people. So he asked him first. He said, what's that, my brother? The man said, Ya Rasulullah, هَذِهِ تَقِينِ الْحُمَّةِ O Messenger of Allah, this thread saves me from humma, meaning from fever. So he has experienced that as long as that's in there, he has no fever. You know what the Prophet said? did? He put his finger like this, his honorable finger, and cut it. And he said, this will throw you in hell. And throw it. Meaning, do not believe like that. Because if you do that, you are open for superstitions now. Anything can come to you. It's no more Allah who helps you. It's no more Allah who guides you. It's no more Allah who protects you. But this way, as long as I have it. And how many people, you see them having bracelets? I'm not talking about medical bracelets or this and that. Careful. If you have to put anything, should you watch? For ladies, yes. Gold, silver, beauty, ornament, but not for men. I tell many brothers, are you from one or the lucky? <laughs> Serious. <coughs> That's a long necklace. Actually, sometimes they have these stones. Oh. Yes, excellent, excellent. Also, to have a ring with a stone, and you believe in the stone, that is shirk. You know, this stone brings me luck. This stone makes me feel good. This stone will always make women look at me. That is shirk. So you believe in stones, that's what the mushrikeen were believing in. What's the difference between a mushrik 1400 years ago in the Prophet Sassam time who believed that this idol feed him? At least he believes in a bigger idol. You believe in a small idol. <laughs> who is worse? <laughs> Now the will both worse, but one is worse than the other one. So please don't. Do not believe in anything that brings you luck. You know, some people uh, believe in the uh, color. They say, when I wear, when I wear pink, oh, always I get what I want. When you wear stuff, whenever I wear uh, blue, uh, I have problems. But I experience. And some people also believe in a day. You know, say Tuesday. Tuesday is always horrible in my in my life. This is all part of sin. May Allah save us. Say Amin. So why we are learning this? To avoid it. We are learning the major sins so that we never, inshallah, fall into them. Amin. Some people the with what? Allah is okay. Allah. It's okay, but better not, because sometimes you go with it to the toilet, right? Yeah, better not. But if 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 some women, way men, man cannot have necklace. Necklace is for way men, not for men. Sorry, brothers. Yes, yes. Many people wrong, wrong, wrong system. They, they're really far away from Islam. When you say about the, the, the Turkey, you know, sometimes they sell the pendant and that, like, you remember, actually, you don't mean anything that would happen. How is it? No, if it is a beautiful thing, fine. But as long as it has the shape of an eye, no. If it's an ornament, beauty, no problem. Islam is not against beauty, but not beauty with an eye. Or the hand of Fatima. Have you seen the hand of Fatima? Yeah. Yeah. Hand like yes. this with an eye. They call it Fat Fatima. That's not the hand of Fatima. Fatima radiallahu anha, the daughter of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, she is insha'Allah uh, safe. But that's you and me. They say, hand of Fatima, hang it in your car, hang it in your home, nothing will happen. Yes, the hand. Hand in the <coughs> In North Africa you find a lot, in Morocco and this. Okay? So, do not believe in any superstition, do not believe in anything that may protect you. Only Allah will protect you. Wallahu khayrun hafidha wa huwa arhamur rahimin. Allah says, and Allah is the best protector and He is the most merciful.
Nobody else. By, by finishing this part of, uh, of uh, shirk, uh, of uh, seher, which is a form of shirk and kufr, we go to the second major se uh, sin, inshallah, and then I give you... Can I just ask, uh, I mean, in, in, I don't know about our country, but in Malaysia, sometimes they live in Kusaka. Kusaka is an imperative. Jinn. Yeah. Yes. Ah, good, good. Yes. Yes. Okay, you should not. You should not deal with them. Yeah. Yes, some jinn work for humans. And they become what we call uh, yes. subservient. But they are not subservient. You are subservient in reality. For him to do things to you, do you know how many things you have to do? So stay away. Allah says, and they were humans dealing with the jinn. They increased them nothing in pain. Pain after pain after pain. Please don't do that. Stay away from the jinn. How do you get rid of them? Like no, no. Just say, A'udhu Billahi. Ah, how to get rid of them? Say, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem. Rabbi A'udhu Bika Minha. This is the dua to get rid of the, sh the jinn. These are the dua to seek refuge to Allah from any jinn. Maybe sometimes, you know, these so called parents, they pass a jinn to you or whatever. They didn't know, may Allah forgive them. Rabbi, a'udhubika. Min, hamazati, hamazati shayatir. Wa a'udhubika. An, yahdurun. Rabbi, a'udhu bika min hamazati ash-shayateen wa a'udhu bika an yahdurun which means my lord I seek refuge to you from the whispering of all shayateen and I seek refuge to you that they be present I don't want them to be near me I don't want their whispering to come to me. <coughs> it will be, uh, can one of you take photo of this and pass it on? <coughs> ah, through the, the WhatsApp system? Yeah, no, no, uh, through the WhatsApp. Take this, this dua, and pass it on. Surah al 97, 19. Yes, yes. There is another dua. This is what dua. Rabbi a'udhu bika min hamazati shayateen wa a'udhu bika an yahdurun surah sister Maymuna I will be known 97, 98 97, 98 surah al-mu'minun 97, 98 there is another dua if, if, if you panic just say a'udhu billahi min ash-shaytani rajim sami'i al-adim Mina Shaitan Yes. The second one. O oh Allah, I seek refuge to Allah, the most hearing, the most knowledgeable from the Shaitan who is cursed. Once you say that, Insha'Allah, shaitan will give up on you. He wants to come, he will give up. He will run away. No, no. <coughs> Surah Al-Mu'minun, the believers. Surah Al-Mu'minun. Uh, I don't remember the chapter, but uh, the early ones. The, the, the check the first one. Uh, uh, sister, I, uh, what, hold on, please. Yes. We have, uh, like, the um, Shifa, Islamic people, mm. and um, people with really diverse um, 
disturbances of gene. And they will tell you to eat certain items or drink certain water. And sometimes they with down um, the dog, which is a, a special uh, leaf. Yes, yes, yes. And, and it's supposed to be something. Mm. Uh, that is Islamic healing, but the way we are practicing now, it's too much. That is, Rasulullah is always to say to someone, go and do this, uh, evil eye. Like one day someone said, oh, Mr. of Allah, I think uh, my brother so and so, Muslim, Muslim brother, like sister, like you and me, uh, saw me and he liked what I was wearing, but he didn't say, MashaAllah. He just said, oh, you look good. So I think I've been sick since then. So he called him, he said, go make wudu, make wudu, the leftover, give it to your brother who is sick, and he put that, the, the water, and then he took shower. Since then, the evil eye disappeared. He was under an evil eye, sometimes of people who like you. Sister Hanis, you look so nice. They forget to say mashallah. You tell them, please say mashallah. To you tell them mashallah. Subhanallah. La ilaha illallah. Okay? Sometimes you don't need. How about people who hate you? Ah, that is even worse. So if the, <laughs> the eye of someone who likes you can harm you, how about the one? That's why when you see your chuchu, say subhanallah, mashallah. And stop showing yourselves on Facebook. Uh, some people, I have done this, I have done that. Where are you going? <laughs> I have done this, look at me here, look at me there. And then people are like, hmm, ah. And then you, now you know why you have some problems. Don't put so many pictures on, of, of yourself on, oh, especially, oh, I am in Turkey. I am in uh, uh, Bali, I'm playing here. That, you are bringing so much negativity towards you. People say, oh, this guy is really, look at them, happy couple. And now no more happy couple. But that's an evil eye. Careful. Put a high ayah, put hadith, uh, put something uh, nice that reminds you your mother, your father, but not... Uh, Hey guys, look at me what I'm eating. This ikan that is cannot be caught uh, except that I don't know who. Yeah. Or an asli can catch it. Allahu Akbar. And someone is, doesn't even have a nasi uh, lemak to eat. While he's seeing you eating a fish that costs 10,000 ringgit. So, don't also bring problems to yourself. Sometimes you invite problems. Yes, Sister Aisha. Fatim. Yes, yes. Those who go to Bomo should be reprimanded and even rotan. It's up to the judge. But not had, no hudud. It's called ta'zir. Hudud is what Allah and His Messenger said to do. Ta'zir is what the judge can do within his authority as a judge. Huh? Reprimanded, rotan. That's it. And, and be taught, rehabilitated, because that person was weak. He went to seek help. He missed the, uh, the address. The address is Allah, Azza wa Jalla. Qibla to rak'as, that's all, for help. He went to a human being who is lower than him or her in every sense of the word to seek help. So we tell him to rehabilitate. We teach them the thing. But the one who does magic must be killed. Okay? But we just said that if you die believing in sihr, you are not going to go to Jannah. Isn't that enough punishment? Ah, so there is no killing for people who go to Bomo. But the Bomo, sorry, if caught. But who kills? When we say kill, I don't mean you and me. Professional. No, not professional. <laughs> Law, court. He has to go through an Islamic court and the judge sentence and that's it. So give him also what we call due process. But the due process is very short in Sharia. Sorry, we don't waste time with criminals. Take you to 25 years in jail, 
tax money on you. You go skinny, you come out like this with muscles because you have been just pumping muscles. No, 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 no. We catch you, we find you guilty, bye bye. That, and that's swift law, and you will see how the society start behaving. Ah, this rampant rampant who are uh, stealing bags of women and putting them until an old woman hits the, the floor and she has uh, now concussion after a few days she dies. Well, the punishment is very clear in Islam. It's because it's no more stealing. You cause the death of someone. So, many, alhamdulillah, things we need to do. And Allah says, subhanAllah, in Surah Al-Baqarah, وَلَكُمْ فِي الْقِصَاسِ حَيَاتُ يَا أُولِي الْأَلْبَانِ Indeed, in Qisas, in Hudud law, you have a real life, all people of understanding. But you don't have understanding, that's why you can't see it. You don't understand. You understand other things, like physics, medicine, law, golf. But you cannot understand the Sharia, sorry, it's not given to anyone. Okay? Now, uh, Sayyiduna Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we end with this. What was he doing for Hassan and Hussein? Radiallahu Anhuma. His chuchus. What was he doing? He used to bring them under him. By the way, when the Prophet Sassim died, Hassan and Hussein were just seven years old. Seven years old. He left them still small. He used to bring them, and he used to do this. أُعِيذُكُمَا بِكَلِمَاتِ اللَّهِ أَتَّامَّ مِنْ كُلِّ شَيْطَانٍ وَهَامَّ وَمِنْ كُلِّ عَيْنٍ لَامَّ He was saying this dua, which I'm going to write for you. I ask Allah to protect you, O oh my grandchildren, from every shaitan and from every evil, and from every eye that may harm you. Because sometimes you say, oh, so nice. Beautiful children. And then the kids are sick. Sometimes, yeah, you're, you're with your children, your baby with you, eating somewhere, and someone is playing. Alhamdulillah, they mean good, but they don't say, mashallah. They say, gamot chate, alama. What's wrong with him? Uh, because they don't say, mashallah. Ah. So always, well, before you take your kids with you, read some, this, this dua of Rasulullah sallallahu because it's sunnah. أُعِيذُكُمَا بِكَلِمَاتِ اللَّهِ التَّامَّةِ مِنْ كُلِّ شَيْطَانٍ وَهَامَّةِ وَمِنْ كُلِّ عَيْنٍ لَامَّةِ Here is the dua. If it's a man, if it's a boy, أُعِيذُكَ If it's a female, أُعِيذُكِ That's the language. أُعِيذُكَ بِكَلِمَاتِ بِكَلِمَاتِ اللَّهِ التَّامَّةِ مِنْ كُلِّ شَيْطَانٍ وَهَامَّةِ وَمِنْ كُلِّ عَيْنٍ لَامَّةٍ This is the dua. For you, you say, أَعُوذُ If you want to say it to someone, you say, أُعِيذُكَ For you, you just say, أَعُوذُ أَعُوذُ بِكَلِمَاتِ اللَّهِ التَّامَّةِ مِنْ كُلِّ شَيْطَانٍ وَهَامَّةٍ وَمِنْ كُلِّ عَيْنِ لَامَّةٍ I seek refuge to Allah through His beautiful words, the Qur'an, the, 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 the knowledge of Allah, the complete ones, from every shaitan and from every evil and from every eye that is going to harm me. No, they sometimes they don't mean. They don't mean. So you don't know. 
Yeah, but if they mean yes, because they are jealous. Jealousy, careful of jealousy. Someone is jealous of you? Ah. Oh. Yes, when they are jealous, yes, they are sinful. Hasad, you will see Hasad. Hasad also is a big sin. Hasad. Evil, evil, jealousy. Envy. Okay. Allow me, sisters and brothers, to move to straight to the second major sin for you today. And then, inshallah, if there is a question, I'll be more than happy to entertain, just for the sake of time. Ah, the fourth major sin in Islam. After shirk, killing, sihr comes leaving the salah, not to pray. Not praying. Muslim who does not pray. Listen, we are not talking about uh, Muslims. Huh? We are talking about a Muslim who commits shirk, a Muslim who kills, a Muslim who commits sihr, and a Muslim who doesn't pray. All major sins means, first you have to be a Muslim. Non-Muslims, we don't care about them. They should care about themselves. Because after kufr, there is no sin. If you commit, if you commit kufr, I cannot tell you, sorry, uh, zina is haram. Because you are already kafir. We are talking about Muslims. Now what did Allah say about those who don't pray? You'll be amazed. Maybe you never heard this in your life. There are, there are people, Muslims like you and me, who don't pray, right? So let's see what the Quran says about them. And let's see what the Hadith says about them. So that, inshallah, next time when we meet them, we must, for Allah's sake, do da'wah to them, remind them. Because they are really in big danger, they may not know. It's like someone who has cancer and doesn't even know. But when I come and tell you, look, sorry, you have cancer. And here it is, These are the, this, this is the scan, this is the mammogram, this whatever. Now it's your duty to act quickly. Mm. Right? Let's see. In Surah Maryam. Surah Maryam. Surah Maryam is Surah 19. Verse 59 and 60. Surah 19. I'm giving you evidence so that when you talk to someone, say, look, I may not know a lot about Islam, but I came to learn. Today, I learned this. Here is the verse. Because when you give dalil, when you give evidence to people, you are very strong. Right? Because people think, sorry, you are just like me. You just started praying or you just started attending classes. Yes. And that's the beauty of Islam. If I start just yesterday, I'm better than me. Uh, you know, be you, because you still didn't try. Huh. So please listen to me, that's all. Allah Azza wa Jal says, فَخَلَفَ مِن بَعْدِهِمْ خَلْفٌ أَضَاعُوا الصَّلَاةَ وَاتَّبَعُوا الشَّهَوَاتِ وَاتَّبَعُوا الشَّهَوَاتِ فَسَوْفَ يَلْقَوْنَ غَيَّا إِلَّا مَنْ تَابَ وَآمَنَ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا we just said ayah 59, 16. 59 and verse 16. Surah 19. Surah Maryam. Ayah 59, 16. 59 and 16. Ah, sisters, yalla, help me. You, you are becoming slow. All right. Now, Allah says in this ayah, who has the image? Yalla sister uh, Maimun, read for us the image. Now there has succeeded them a later generation who have neglected the prayers and have followed last. They will meet the vision. Good. Look. And then the next ayah, 16. Save him who repents and believes and does right. Good. These will enter the garden and they will not be wrong in the least. All right. In verse 59, Allah says, Then came after them another generation. That, number one, what they have done? They have lost the salat. Ada'u salat. They don't, they don't pray. Like today, come see, compared to our forefathers, compared to the Sahaba, compared to the people, the, the early generation, we don't pray like them. We think it's a burden. 
but we are ready to watch three, four hours movie. Soccer, Saturday night, no problem. But salat is like difficult. Five minutes is difficult. So adha'u salat. Second, wattaba'u shahawat. And they follow their desires. فَسَوْفَ يَلْقَوْنَ Then they will meet ghai. Ghai actually, the real translation of the word ghai, it's a river in hellfire. That hellfire itself, seek refuge to Allah from it. Ghai is a river in Jahannam. So, those who don't pray, do you know where they are going? They are not just going to hell, they are going to a river in Jahannam, full of magma. Jahannam itself is scared from that river. Because they don't pray. Actually, it's not just they don't pray. They don't pray on time. May Allah forgive us. They mix the prayers. They pray on and off. How about those who don't pray at all? Look, this man, you pray, but you pray whenever you have time. Tell your boss, I can see you whenever I have time. When your boss calls you, say, uh, sir, ma'am, uh, when, when I have time, I can see you. What do you think your boss will do? Huh? Yalla, the principal in school is calling you. Say, student so-and-so, go visit the principal. And say, uh, you know, what, what I feel like. <laughs> what, what? What happens? You're in big trouble. So Allah Azza wa is calling you, Hayya ala salat. I say, do good. I don't have time for you. I'm watching my favorite cartoon or my favorite Korean uh, drama or Bollywood. <laughs> But that's what we do with Allah, right? Don't do that. Don't let Allah wait. Show respect. Salat on time. Salatu ala waqtil. So, Abdullah bin Abbas radiallahu anhumah, cousin of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and the best scholar of Islam when it comes to tafsir. There is no one better than Abdullah bin Abbas. Remember his name. He is the cousin of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Al Abbas is the uncle of the Prophet, right? Like Hamza, Abbas, Abu Talib, Abu Lahab, these were uncles of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Abbas had few children. One of them was the best in learning the Quran, understanding, and interpreting the Quran. Abdullah bin Abbas. Abdullah bin Abbas, may Allah be pleased with him and his father, said, this ayah, actually, it's not for those who don't pray at all. It's for those who delay it from the time. Ya Allah! If I am going to be with these people in hell just because I delayed, how about those who don't pray at all? Serious. By the way, what is medicine without time? You take medicine but not on time. And the doctor says, this medicine must be before Makkah. This one after Makkah. This one at night. Don't take it during the day. But you don't care. You, you drink, but your time. How about when you don't take the medicine at all? Huh? Now for him? Then you expect, oh doctor, I'm not feeling good at all. <laughs> you are not even taking the medicine. Or if you take, it's not the way I told you. So there are, there are people who, they say, why? Allah doesn't answer us. Why? You still ask? Look at your son at first. Do you pray on time? Do you respect Allah for him to help you? You keep him waiting, he keeps you waiting. Ah, you keep him waiting. You ask Allah for help, let him. He will make you wait for, for 10 years. Don't make Allah wait. Ya Allah, subh, on time. Dohar, on time. Maghrib, asr, on time. Maghrib, on time. Isha, inshallah. Now, if death comes, welcome. I already did my dohar. Between dohar and asr, death can come, right? Allah will not ask you, why didn't you pray Asr? Because Asr didn't come yet. But Maghrib comes, you didn't pray Asr. Uh -oh. So how about not praying at all? May Allah have mercy on us. It's a major sin. People have to understand this. I don't know why the Khatibs are not bringing these ayahs and telling people, listen, some of you in the khutbah like I do, some of you in this khutbah come only because it's Jumu'ah. Don't do that. Fear Allah, my brothers. And uh, whoever is Tidur, like I see in Jumu'ah, wake him up. That guy, wake him up. Huh? 
Listen, no sleep here in Jumu'ah. That's form of wasting the salat. You're supposed to come and listen to the khutbah. The khutbah has to touch people's problems. Now, don't cheat. Don't beat your wives. Be nice. Do the, that's what, you not talk about something and they are like, what is this imam talking about? And then we waste 500, 600 hours. Because combine all those people, each one is giving you half an hour. That's how much time we are wasting. Yes, sister. Sister. Sister, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so, so there is no such thing as qada in salat? No, there is. There is qada. But the qada, only if you make a mistake, you oversleep. You didn't mean you went to sleep and then you, you woke up already fajr. That is qada. You, you still have to pray. But not like deliberately, you know, deliberately. I don't want to pray. Here you make qada or not. According to Imam Ibn Hazm, the great uh, Andalusian scholar, he said, look, if, if the sun rises, no need for you to pray salat al uh, but Shaykh, he said, because it's called Salatul Fajr, Salatul Subh, meaning before sunrise. So he's very particular about time. And very true, come on, yani, uh, imagine that the king, Agun, calls you, you will go late. Huh? Yalla. And you keep coming late. Yeah, how sick do you have to be when you can't, when you can't pray? Ah, excellent. There is no excuse for Salat. In Salat, how sick? Unless you are in coma. Unless you really don't know what you're doing. In coma or you fainted. The only time when you cannot pray. But the moment you open your eyes from the coma, you're supposed to be, you, you're supposed to think about Salat. If not, people should remind you. Stroke also. You know, people who have stroke, Alzheimer. We should remind them. We should always say, Auntie, like my mother, may Allah have mercy on her, my late mother, when she was uh, with the stroke, we always remind her and make her make wudu or tayammum and pray. It's our duty for our families. So that's how. But there is no excuse for you not to pray because you're sick. If you are burned, burned and covered with bandage, you still have to pray with your eyes. Look, you are covered. You cannot even touch tayammum, let alone wudu. You're burned, 100%. You're still like that, with eyes. Allah. You can move a little bit your hand, fine. But you can, if you are hanged from your feet, in a jail, you still have to pray. The only thing that has no excuse, Allah is Salah. No excuse for Salah. Fasting, you're sick. You cannot fast, you're traveling, no problem. Zakat, you're poor, you don't have money, no problem. Hajj, you cannot go, no problem. But Salat, don't say, I cannot pray. Even if you are hanged, hanged from your feet, you still pray like that. Your feet are up in the sky, you pray with your eyes. Because only Allah can come to your rescue. Now, so when you're sick, who's going to give you help? Doctors? Doctors cannot even help themselves if the death comes to them. So, Ya Allah, I'm weak. Ya Allah, look at me. Ya Allah, forgive me, ma'af, I've been wrong. I apologize, please forgive me. Allah wants to hear that. But we don't. May Allah have mercy on us. If you always, you overslept, and unknowingly overslept, mm. then... You're forgiven. No, for oil. Yes. Subo. Ah. So your near, uh, although it's part Qada. of your Qada. time, you can see Yes, Qada. Must say, Qada al You say Qada, yeah. Qada'an or Qada. Yeah, Qada'an is Malay. Qada in Arabic. Because I'm not praying on time. That's why it's called Qada. If it's on time, no need for, for the word Qada. Okay? So the Salat, let's first see. According to Number one scholar of Quran after Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, Abdullah ibn Abbas, radiyallahu anhuma. This ayah was not revealed for people who don't pray. It's for the people who delay the prayers. Allahu Akbar. How about those who don't pray? Ah, let's see. Shay, it is under no circumstances. I mean, as a group, you can pray. Yes. Very good. 
because it is not expected for a Muslim not to pray. It has never crossed the minds of Sahaba that a Muslim will not pray. He may fall, he may kill, he may, <laughs> he may commit zina, he may do that, but not pray. Not to pray, no. To them, was like they said, uh, many Sahaba said, look, if we see a Muslim eating uh, Ramadan, eating on the day of Ramadan, we will say, maybe he's sick. We will find an excuse. Someone is, maybe he's sick, maybe he's traveler, he's passing by. Although, careful, never eat, let's say you have your period sister, don't eat in front of your brothers or sisters or father or, on Ramadan, or children, because they may not know that you have period. And they think it's okay, they start eating. Always hide and eat during your period. Even when you're traveling, unless you are on the plane, don't say, it's okay, I'm traveling, uh, so while I'm waiting for my flight, I go eat. No, until you start the journey. Because the, uh, the, uh, the plane may not take off, and then you're stuck. You still in Kerala eat. So you go back fasting, until you fly. Okay? So don't let people, don't put yourself in suspicion. The others, they said, if we see someone not paying zakat, we will always say, maybe this brother is poor. Even when we see quite wealthy, maybe this time he has no money. Because you may live in a nice house, but really you don't have money. Uh, if we don't see him in Hajj, people are going to Hajj and he's not going. We will say, he might not have the money to travel. He may have the money, but not to travel. But Sanat, they said we will question why this man doesn't pray. Why he doesn't come to the masjid, let alone pray. I'm telling you, there are things for why he... Oh, if I tell you about how the Sahaba... No one prayed in his home, do you know that? Sunnah, yes. Sunnah they pray at home. But Fajr, Dohr, Asr, Maghrib, that's why they were strong. They had five times to meet one another. How do you feel when you meet me in class like this? Twice a month. Imagine we meet five times a day. And you remind me of Allah, I remind you of Allah. Subhanallah, Allah, Akbar. Five minutes, ten minutes, that's all. Ah, between Maghrib and Isha, there is a dars in Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Between Maghrib and Isha, daily, 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 until he died. Men and women attend. After Fajr, they are making dhikr with him until the sun rises. They pray duha and then everybody goes to business or to jihad or whatever. So Salah, they used to question, why you don't come? Why you don't pray? So, please, this issue, we need to tell people about the You will see the danger of not praying, but you are asking questions. That's why you are not letting me continue. Let me continue. Here is the second ayah. So, the first ayah to show you the danger of not praying. Ah, I didn't finish. What is going to happen to those who don't pray and follow their desires? Ghayy. They be thrown in a river called Ghayy. Ghayy. G-H-A-Y. Ghayy. This is a bad word. Don't, don't call your son Ghayy. He will be a river in hell and he will show you hell already in life. Because he sounds good, Shaykh. I was looking for uh, another G name. <laughs> like if your daughter is A, Azma, Azra, Azrin. Why you, all your children have to have the... <laughs> Allahu Akbar. May Allah have mercy on us. Huh? In hell. There is one river in hell. Her name is Ghai. That river is allocated for people who don't pray and follow their desires. May Allah save us. Okay. Here is the second ayah, evidence that those who don't pray are in big trouble with Allah, which is a major sin. Because Allah will not put you in hell for small sin. Please understand. When Allah says you're going to go to hell or to the river called Ghay or Wail, because you committed a major thing. Allah will never put someone in Jahannam for a minor sin. Allah is Ghafur Rahim. But you made a big sin, you need tawbah, but you, you, you don't want to do it. That's why. Here is the ayah. Surah Al-Ma'un. 
سورة الماعون شرط سورة at the end of the Quran can you tell سورة الماعون Allah says فويل للمصلين الذين هم عن صلاتهم ساهون أرأيت الذي يكذب بالدين فذلك الذي يدعو اليتيم ولا يحض على طعام المسكين فويل للمصلين الذين هم عن صلاتهم ساهون الذين هم يراؤون ويمنعون المعون الشرط شرط سورة every Muslim supposed to memorize in this short surah Allah mentioned something very scary what is it wail who who to those musallin Allah calls them musallin people think they are musallin look brother he prays my husband prays my wife prays my son prays my dad prays but what salat which salat the way Rasulullah says and prayed or the way they want to pray no, not the way Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam prayed, because my father or my wife or my son, on and off, whenever they feel like. Ah, so then? So, they pray to people, I think he prays. But how? الَّذِينَ هُمْ عَنْ صَلَاتِهِمْ سَاهُونَ Luckily, luckily, Allah didn't say fi salati. Those who, actually, they don't pay attention to their salat. Meaning, they pray only when they have time. They never make time for Salat. Salat is not priority for them. Salat is not priority. It's only when I have time. So Allah says, <coughs> another scary word. Ghay is a river in hell. Wail is another river on hell. <coughs> in hell. Ya Allah, what is waiting for the people who just delay the Salat? Like when you mix, you mix Dohr with Asr. You can mix Dohr and Asr unless you are traveling. If you are traveling, yes, but you are not traveling. You are in your office, you are in your house, you are in the mall. And Wallah, in Malaysia you have no excuse because Alhamdulillah, almost every mall has a musalla. But you think you are so important. How can I put my face on that? Uh, don't do that. That's arrogance. Don't feel like, you know who I am? I am once this so and so. Don't do that. You are slave of Allah. And don't think about those titles. That is a killer. Those titles, put them aside. Don't go by, you know who I am? I am Princess so and so. Don't do that. My advice to you, sisters and brothers, my sincere advice to you, don't let those titles uh, cripple you. Why they will cripple you? Ha, who was richer than Abu Bakr Siddiq? Radiallahu anhu. Have you heard young Barhormat Tansri Abu Bakr Siddiq? In Malaysia. Yes, in Malaysia you will. Wow. Have you heard? I never heard that. No, no, look, if people call you fine, but, but don't mind. Hey, you forgot to call me Tansri. Actually, I am happy that you called me by name, you know, because those titles were so much on me, I started flying without wings. <laughs> you know, sometimes you fly without wings, but this brother or sister reminded me, like, look, you are slave of Allah. Yeah, why we, subhanAllah, why we never, all Sahaba made Hajj. Do you hear Haji Abu Bakr Sajir, <laughs> Haji Ali bin Abi Talib, <laughs> you never hear that. Aisha, Allah, just Aisha, Ali, Fatima. We say radiallahu anhum. May Allah be pleased with them. Ah, please. Take off my title and make a prayer for me. Say Zubair. Inshallah radiallahu anhu. But don't say, oh Allah, oh Allah, until I become I don't know what. Dangerous. Okay? Easy. Shia, I have a question, this one. When you when you're traveling. Uh, when you do the uh, Jamaat Sahih, can you do it at home? Uh, yes. When you, you know, go back, you mean? You know, you, you travel to Johor, you come back. Ah, uh, no. You do it during the journey. For Good. Ta for Tahir. Ah, Tahir, yes. Yeah. Okay. Like this, look. Let's say you're going to Johor, like Sister Maimouna said. You're going to Johor. Dawn and Asr, if, if you are in Johor or on the way to Johor, you pray there. When you come back, if you are coming back at night and you know you're gonna, it's okay to delay. 
Because you're coming back at night. When you come back, it's already like Isha. It's okay. So you can, can pray Maghrib and Isha. Yeah. Can you combine? Jam yes. Jam'at Yes. At home. at home. As long as you reach after Adhan of Isha. Uh, if, if you reach. During Adhan? Uh, as long as you did not enter the house, you're fine. Okay. Look, if you hear the Adhan while you are uh, on the escalator, it's okay. You see, because the Malaysian scholars or the Ustads, they right. always teach us different ways. They say we have to stop in the mosque. Right. We have to be on the way. We cannot no. enter the house. No, no, no. We have to do it before. With my due respect, no. Why? Look. Don't, why they make the things so difficult? I don't understand why they feel like they feel they feel real scholars unless they make it difficult for you. This is not right. I'm not saying you should not make the deen difficult for people. Rasul Sassim said, as long as you didn't reach home, and there is Adam. Look, you reach Kuala Lumpur, but you are not home yet. But you are not uh, taking long road, jalan jalan, so that you miss there. No, don't play with Allah. You are really on the road, there is Adam. Once you reach your home, you pray Maghrib and Isha. And shorten the Isha even to a Qasr. Shorten the Salat. Because you reach, you reach home, after the Adhan. The Adhan means time has come. That's what it means. And you reach home after that. Even by a minute. Let alone an hour or two. No. Qasr doesn't mean you have to do it uh, on the way. Allah made it easy. You want to do taqdeem? You want to pray in Malacca? Let's say you are still in Malacca. And you pray, mashallah, Maghrib and Isha there. Fine. Although Isha didn't come yet. You stop for Maghrib rest area. You, you make wudu, you pray. Maghrib, and then you pray Isha. Because you are afraid, maybe you go home still to stay. That's one opinion. The other opinion, I feel comfortable, maybe after they take shower and this and that, it's okay. But if you reach before Adhan, you pray Maghrib three rak'as and Isha four rak'as. And it's not Jamal. Yeah. You are just Qada. Qada Maghrib, and you pray Isha. <coughs> May Allah help us. Okay. فَوَيْنُ لِلْمُصَلِّينَ الَّذِينَ هُمْ عَنْ صَلَاتِهِمْ سَاهِمُ You know what Abdullah bin Abbas also said about this ayah? He said, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Allah said, عَنْ عَنْ means about, but not in, في He didn't say, في صلاتهم, because we all make sahu, sahwi, we all forget in salat, right? Your brain, your mind is with something else. If Allah said, woe to those who pray, and forget about us during the prayers, we are all going to hell. You and me and everybody. Because we are forgetful. No, here he meant those who forget about the salat. You know, it's okay. I know it's a movie. And just the United is playing, man. How can I pray? Well, after, after the game. That's what we do. A true mu'min will say, look, nafs, you really want to watch? Wallahi, you are not going to watch. Turn off. Allahu Akbar. Finish. Maybe go back up. Because the nafsu is following desires now. Tabao shahawat. You're following your desire of watching. Or finishing the movie, finishing the meeting, finishing this. Ah, uh, no. Excellent. If dinner or even lunch is prepared, sunnah to eat first. But how long are you going to eat? Five minutes, ten minutes. No, if it's going to take you one hour, no, no, I better pray. Because some, you know, some makan, Malaysian makan, mashallah. <laughs> cannot stop. By the top. And you have to eat from everything, mashallah. They are generous, but sorry, let's pray. And then we have all the time from Dohr until Asr to eat. How about that? From Isha until Fajr. But let's pray first. But sunnah is to eat something. The Prophet said, eat something. At least take something and eat. So that your nafs will not be telling you, oh, I saw nasi nasi You know, I ate something. Halas, you got some, some, for sure. Okay. The third ayah. Here is the ayah that also shows you, if you don't pray, you are in big trouble. Because we said they delay the salat. They just delay the salat. How about not praying at all? Allahu Akbar. Here is the ayah. Surah Al-Munafiqun. Oh, oh. The hypocrites. Surah Al-Munafiqun, verse 9. 
What did Allah say in Surah Al-Munafiqoon? Allah says, يا أيها الذين آمنوا لا تلهكم أموالكم ولا أولادكم عن ذكر الله ومن يفعل ذلك فأولئك هم الخاسرون. All you who believe that not your properties and your children take you away from the dhikr of Allah. The dhikr of Allah means salat here. Do not let your property and your children stop you from salat. Salat means what? You delay. You know, I am so busy with this meeting of millions of dollars or thousands of dollars, I'm not going to pray today. Because the meeting is very important. Allah said, don't let that happen to you. And sometimes, what's the reason that doesn't let you go to the masjid or pray? Children. Daddy, we want to go to play. Say yes, we're going to play in the masjid. How about that? <laughs> we pray and then play. Yeah. Our masjid should have playgrounds. Each masjid should have playground. If we are smart, we don't do that. How do you think you're gonna? Do? How do you think you will attract children? They know. Look, now they, they tell you, let's go play. Actually, they won't play, but they tell you, let's go play. A place where sisters feel comfortable. A coffee shop. Why not? People like coffee instead of going to coffee shop in the parameters of the masjid. Matan, something where people feel, huh? so we need to make the masajid more friendly, where people can come and even a sister has period, cannot go in, she can play with her children, small ones, while the husband is praying. So alhamdulillah, no one is missing, neither the dunya nor the akhirah. Something to think about, inshallah, projects for the future. Why, seriously? Ah. Uh, Alhamdulillah, there are, there are. I can see some masajid have this type of, Alhamdulillah, it's good. Do you know how Umar radiallahu anhu built the Kufa? Many people don't know that city at Kufa in southern Iraq, it was built by Umar radiallahu anhu. What did he do? How? This is how. He asked four archers, the best archers. Each one of them take his arrow and bow and one towards the north, one towards the south, the other one towards the east and west. And let go. Wherever it goes, land, he made a circle on those four. And in the center of the city, he built a masjid first. Around the masjid, market. And around the masjid and the market, he said to people, build your houses. They started building houses. That is Islamic architecture. The masjid should be the center of life. And around the masjid should be your business, so that whenever you don't have to worry too much, you are near your business, you are near your... Yeah, so you pray, and you know it's quite safe. You go back. While the homes come around, so everybody can come to pray, everybody. The masjid is no more the center of our life. Many Muslims, when they are building, we don't tell the developer, listen, the first thing in, in, in this piece of land we give you, the middle should be left for a masjid. And a month. And then they develop. No, go ahead. If we do that, if we give them the direction of how Muslims should be, they will see the greatness. No one will be, ah, no, no, I cannot go. No, it's in the center. Close to shop. Uh, Sayan, you're going for Maghrib and Isha? Please bring with you some, some rice. Because he's going near the same thing. He's going to pray, and the market is there. So, all you who believe, do not let two things deprive you from what? The dhikr of Allah. And he who does that, he who let his property and his children deprive him from salat, what happens? Those are the losers. Khasirun are those who lose in akhirah. Those who lose in akhirah go where? Jannah or Jahannam? Here is another ayah to prove that those who don't pray will go to Jahannam. It's a major sin. And when Allah says don't, what does that mean? Warning. When Allah says don't let your properties and your children deprive you from salat, what does that mean? It means it's haram. Please understand when he says don't, it means don't. We, I think sometimes when Allah says no, we understand it yes. <laughs> Have you seen? Maybe. No, you know, honestly, when I tell you, tida, 
And you think I said yes? When I say don't, do not. You, you think, you say, oh, Sheikh, I thought you told me do. I said not. And the N-O-T was huge. You didn't see that because your desire. And you know, you are so weak in front of your money, property, and your children. You are weak. The fear of politicians, I advise politicians, listen, if you know any politician, please tell him what I'm saying. Say, brother, sister, be careful of your children. You know, some of your enemies cannot come to you directly, they can't, you're strong. But your weakness is in your kids. So they go to your son, to your wife, sister, please tell him. And sister is at night. You're strong leader, but at night, no, 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 no. In the morning, son, dad, please. The girl is daddy, mommy. You see? That's why Allah says careful. Two things will really get to you. Your property and your children. This is Allah saying, not me. I'm just explaining. That's it. So, advice, advice. Look, good people advise. And wallahi, our Muslim leaders need advice. We need to advise them. It's their right over us. So that they don't say, you never advise us. I advise, I've been every day telling you. So it looks like the two of the most important human weakness would be Dunya and our Zulia. Yes, excellent. Look how weak you are in front of your children. Because you have very soft spot for them. And the other one, money. Property, more, more, more. These two things, you are very weak in front of them. That's why Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi said, ha, strong, get strong, careful, careful. It's coming from there. So a, a, a good leader will always, never allow his children to say anything about his job. Like, look, don't try to get to, to get, don't try to influence me about someone. Good, no problem. You, you want it, I help, fine. But don't tell me, would you please forgive him for making, for making that mistake? No. But uh, this man needs help. It's okay. It's good to do good. This man, this woman, this brother, this sister, it's okay. But uh, can you please uh, lower his sentencing, Jane? If he has committed the major sin, crime. Huh. So, ayah number four. Ayah number four that shows that people who don't pray are in big, big problem. And this ayah, there is nothing clearer than it. What is it? Surah Al-Muddathir, verses 42 till 48. Six verses in Surah Al-Muddathir shows you clearly that those who don't pray or delay their prayers or don't respect the time of Allah when it comes to the five daily prayers, they are in big trouble with Allah. May Allah save us. Say Amen. Here is the ayahs. A'udhu billahi min ash rajim Ma salakakum fi saqam Qalu lam naku minal musallim Wa lam naku nut'imu al-miskeen Wa kunna nakhudu ma'al khaidin Wa kunna nukathibu biyawm al-deen حتى أتانا اليقين فما تنفعهم شفاعة الشافعين صدق الله عز الله سبحانه وتعالى says in these verses was the English was the English other than sister yes you have was the English for this verse so what has brought you yes to hell they will answer we were not of those who prayed nor did we fit the needy we used to indulge in vain disputes with others who disputed. And we used to deny the day of judgment till death the inevitable will to us. No intercessors' mediation will avail them. Excellent. Here are the ayahs. You know there is a gate in hellfire called Sata. There is a gate in hellfire. You know, you should know these, people, these things. Ah, when I pass by a nice um, 
palace anu there are six seven uh, pintu satu pintu dua pintu tiga taman saraya do you know how many gates are in here Allahu Akbar according to some ulama and ahadith eight gates the worst the worst gate entering jahannam is already a big trouble let alone from the, the worst gate the worst gate is called satar satar this word so don't call your child satar with sin satar this is bad very bad Ah, if someone's name is Sakar, you should change it. You change, yes. If the name in Islam means something bad, you must change it. Sakar. The angels of Jahannam, the, the angels who torture people, how many angels are in Jahannam who is tortured? 19. There are 19 angels, Allah created them in fire. The fire cannot burn them. What they do, they torture. And their boss, his name is Malik. There is an angel, chief of those 18. One of them, his name is? So they, 18 plus 1, 19. Malik is an angel. They will ask these people, the people who enter Jahannam from this gate, what brought you from this gate? What did you commit as a sin that qualifies you to come from the worst gate? If you enter from gate one or two or three, fine, we understand. But for you to do something, you have done something big. The answer is, The first thing, we were not praying. So the people who don't pray, they think they're going to Jannah. Hey, you are not only going to hell, my brother and sister, you're going from the worst gate. Wake up. You need to wake up people, please understand. When I want you to wake up, not to miss the exam, what should I do? As a father, my son is sleeping, and he's tired, he's exhausted, but the exam is at eight, what should I do? My dear son, Salam alaikum, nice in the beginning. After that, Salam alaikum. After that, drink water and mask. Otherwise, you will miss the exam. So what do you do when someone doesn't pray? You just let it, right? No. Keep nagging. You know nagging, ladies? Yes. If you truly love her, of course, you know more nagging than that. You have to keep reminding them. My son, my daughter, my husband, my friend, my mom, my mother, my mother, mommy. If you truly love your mother and she doesn't pray, you must make a lot of prayer to Allah and beg her. Daily, daily, and she shall one day they will. But don't give up. And it's a test for you. And thank Allah you are not tested in your religion. The worst test is not when you get sick, when you have a stroke. The worst test when you don't pray, when you don't open the mushaf, when you don't care, you don't attend classes. You know there is a class, free, no foundation, you don't come. No, no. And you have nothing, eh? it's not like you really have something. No, no. Um, so, the first mistake they did, in order for them to deserve entering to Jahannam from the worst gate, what was it? Were they raping? Were they stealing? No, they were not praying. So don't think not praying is not a big thing. It's a big thing. Please, why I'm telling you sisters, I know some of you brothers. I know some of you feel bad. You have some family members now, you are worried. It's okay, because cre creating Making you more alert will help you help them. Yes. You know, there are two ways of motivating people. By telling them good things and by telling them how bad the situation is. I don't lie to you. I tell you so that now you know, oh, this is dangerous. I need to save my son, my daughter, my father, my husband. I need to, because I care about them. So I go and blah, 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 blah. Apply pressure, why not? Positive pressure, inshallah, why not? The first mistake. Second mistake. We never try to feed or I'm miskin. Uh oh. And you can see prayer 
performing salat and feeding is connected, meaning sadaqa, charity. And the third one, wa kunna nahudu ma'al khaidin. We used to chaka banya banya nonsense. We were talking about <coughs> dunya, Louis Vuitton bags, the latest watch, I don't know what. By the way, whether you have a Rolex or a five ringgit watch, is the time the same or not? Yes. <laughs> Honestly, whether you have an Omega or, or, or you know, the sound, you know, the sound. The sound, no, the desire, the people, you know, I want to show off, look at my watch, you know. That's, what, uh, that's why you buy that uh, expensive, yes. Is the time the same? And by the way, now we have even time on your, our cell phones. Who cares about the watch now? You have uh, time in your car. You have time everywhere. And look, look. Someone is wearing a, a very expensive watch. And all I say, what time is it, please? He gives me. So I, he shared with me his actual watch. By me asking about the time. But who feels so bad if he loses the... The watch? Mm. <laughs> Honestly. One day I asked sister, how much is that bag, sister? She said, oh, sure, you don't want to know. Because she knows. I said, look, it looks uh, the same. And it was almost 100,000. I said, sister, come on. Come on. I may have anything, and I, I better put 100,000 cash in it. If I may have five ringgit piece of cloth, and I better put hundred thousand cash. That that's if you lose it, sister. Even when you can afford, don't do that. Stop doing that. The kafan, the kafan, the gonna if I put you in, whether you have money or not, is almost the same. Two pieces of unstitched cloth. Back to Allah, yalla. Ah. If I have that much money, I put it in an orphanage. I put it in a masjid. Sadaqa jariya. I dig few wells in Africa or in Malaysia. There are people put here. What? 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 Ah. Then, alhamdulillah, I left behind me a legacy. Be wise, my sisters and brothers. Be wise. I'm not saying don't drive a nice car. Don't have a nice home. But why you have 60,000 shoes? More than Emil Damarcos. Hmm? And you know what? It takes you so much, so many years to reach that, uh, you know, uh, pair. And then what? It's already uh, out of fashion. <laughs> People will laugh at you. Look at her. She's wearing a uh, astaghfirullah. Now my question. So, vain talk, vain talk. Talking about sports is vain talk. Talking about, uh, 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 I don't know. Talk about Akhira, talk like this, talk about, look, Sister Marlene left, and may Allah have mercy on her. It's her, it's her, subhanAllah, her. Allah is making us speak about her. It's her, uh, inshallah, risky. Uh, but she took nothing with her. She took something. But that thing is whatever she used to do good, inshallah. So same thing, let me be smart. After this class, when I pray uh, Maghrib and go home, I pledge to Allah to do something. Number one, I pray on time. I will never go to Sahel. No matter how bad my life might be, I will never resort to Sahel. And, this, and then, if I can do something, if Allah has given me some money, let me help. Let me bring joy to people's hearts. Allah will bring joy to my face and heart on the day of fear. Uh, now I'm being smart. But I go here out and start talking about nonsense again, careful. All right. The other mistake they did, they didn't pray, they didn't feed the miskin, they were talking vain talks, and they never truly believed in the Day of Judgment. Don't say, Sheikh, I believe in the Day of Judgment. You don't believe, my brother and sister, if you are not ready. If you don't see yourself preparing for that day, you don't believe. Believe here means you, you act. The belief has never been separated from action in Islam. When we say i'tiqad, aqidah, aqidah actually coming from uqda, from knot. So a knot is called not only when you tie. You didn't tie your faith to Allah through action. 
Hmm, now I see. If you truly believe in Allah, you would have prayed. And on time. Hatta atala yaqeen, until death has come to us. So we were doing four things until death visited us. We were not praying, we were not feeding the miskin, we were talking only about vain, and we were not believing in the day of judgment. Until death came. Allah said, فَمَا تَنْفَعُهُمْ شَفَاعَةُ الشَّافِعِينَ Careful. No one, including Rasulullah Wasallam, can help you. No one. Because he's, he's, he's from Shafa'a, right? He cannot. Please understand, the Shafa'a is going to go only to those who deserve it. Meaning, you have been a good Muslim, but you had some weaknesses. In that case, Allah may allow Rasulullah to intercede for you, but not when you don't pray at all. Not when you go to Sahir. Not when you kill. Well, not when you commit shirk. So they say, no. You know, I, I can live all my life with zina, and inshallah, because I believe in Rasulullah he can intercede for me. So who said that? The Christians do that. Yes, exactly, thank you. It's like, you know, do whatever you do. Jesus has died for your sins. So Muslims are going to say, do whatever you want. Prophet Sallallahu will inshallah intercede for you. Who said that? That doesn't exist. In Islam, we go by these ayahs. Those who make an atom of good, it will be shown out to him. Those who do an atom of evil, it will be shown to him. This is what Allah and his messenger told us to, to look into. Uh, Sheikh Zubair, you know, uh, our uh, Ustaz, Guru told us, don't worry, the Prophet Sassan will do Shafa'a. He will do Shafa'a for those who used to pray, used to fast, used to do, and still they were a little bit scared. Those, yes, the Prophet Sassan will come and say, don't worry. Because you are ready, you are part of my ummah. You don't believe in Rasulullah Sallallahu you do everything the opposite of what the Prophet Sallallahu said. And by the way, careful to those who tell you this. You know, the type of Islam I'm teaching you is, uh, uh, is so connected to Allah. We are above the cloud. We don't need to pray. There are people who do that, careful. You know, they are devils in human form. Have you heard such thing or not? Yeah. Someone comes and say, look, the type of Islam I'm teaching you, don't tap don't worry. We are, because I am so connected to Allah, you know, I don't need to pray. You don't need to pray. Actually, they are telling you that you are better than Rasulullah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Who was the best to Allah? Did he pray? He prayed even more than us. We are just commended fine. He prayed until his feet were not swollen. Yes, there was swollen. They were bleeding. And Aisha cried and said, Ya Rasulullah, why do you do that to yourself? He said, ah, why you do that when Allah has forgiven you? He said, that's the, that's the issue, O Aisha. Should I not be a thankful person for Allah forgiving me? Because Allah has forgiven me, I should thank him, not say, okay, someone has been nice to you, what should you say? Thank you, at least thank you very much, Jazakumullah khair. Show that you are also thankful. So if someone said, who fasted more than Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Who donated more than Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? So no one can come to you and say, it's okay, nah, we are, you know. At this, and those people will, at the end of their life, they will also have problems. May Allah have mercy on us. Uh, since time has come, of course, it was nice to, mashallah, share with you at least few of the things. I wanted to cover the third major sin in Islam, which is leaving the zakat, not paying the zakat. You will see what Allah said about those who don't pay zakat, what Rasulullah said about them, and where they're going to go if they die like that. And by the way, do they take their money with them? No. Yeah, Allah, maybe we wire we wired it. Maybe there is a wiring, special wiring, or I don't know what. So no, 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 you didn't even take the money with you. So we will see that next time, insha'Allah ta'ala. And we will see two more major sins. Let me tell you what are they, just for you insha'Allah to, to keep you interested insha'Allah. After the zakat, we, we still have to finish the salat. There are punishment in Islam. Those who don't pray, what should we do to them? Like sahir, must be killed. 
under Islamic law, those who don't pray, what should we do to them? Ah, you will see. You say, huh? Ooh, that's why a lot of people are against Sharia law. <laughs> because they don't pray. <laughs> and they know that. Ah. You think what? You think, you tell Allah, I am a Muslim. Right? And then you don't do certain things. Zakat. Those who don't pay zakat, what should we do to them? Number one, how grave is their sin? Later on, what has to be done to them in order to make them pray and to make them give zakat? The other one is leaving hajj while you can. If you can, I know you have the money. And you didn't even apply for tabun hajj. It's not like you have been trying and it didn't come. Ah, London, you go. London, easy to go. This one, Australia, New Zealand. Here we come. London, how many times do you make? By the way, how many of you know that that big band, the big band in, in, in London, yeah. the, the, yeah. the clock was stolen by the British. It, it, it was in Jerusalem. How many of you know that? No. So that one, one more reason to, to go to, to and claim it. And the other, the other major sin is zina. So we will talk about finish salat, zakat, hajj, and then we talk about zina. Do you know how many Muslims commit zina? You'll be amazed. I'm not, because the zina, there is the zina of the eye. There is the zina of the tongue. There is the zina of the ear. And then there is the physical zina of the private part. We will talk all about that. May Allah save us and save you. Amen. Rabbana atina min ladunka rahmatan wa hayi ilana min amrina rashada. Ya Allah, forgive our dear sister Marleen in Tisaf. Give her rahmah, give her, Ya Rabbil Alameen, make Quran and make all her good deeds be her companion inside the grave. May you widen her grave. May you, Ya Rabbil Alameen, shower her soul with your infinite rahmah. You are the most forgiving, the most merciful. Ya Rabbil Alameen, if she has done anything wrong, please forgive her. If she has done anything good, please accept it and magnify it. Give uh, Sister Hanis and all the people who know her uh, peace of mind and peace of heart. May you, Ya Allah, forgive us also when we die and before we die. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasanah wa fi al-akhirati hasanah wa fina adab al-nar. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun wa salamun al-musalim alhamdulillah wa barakatuh.